Okay, don't get it twisted. Construction's not done. This isn't my room. Um, but I can't go film downstairs because people are trying to sleep because it's apparently 1 a.m. I didn't know that because time isn't real. Um, and I'm extremely backlit, but we're not going to focus on that right now. Um, I don't know what this video is going to be about. We're just going to talk until I find some sort of semblance of a video because I need to get this video out and I have things to do tomorrow and I'm going on a trip super soon and I still haven't done my finals and just nothing really feels real right now and I was going to make a really educational video but like something that I've realized is like every Wednesday when I'm like oh I need to make a video my brain is just empty and void of ideas but if I, I just need to start filming these videos on like a Monday or Tuesday because those are when I'm like oh my god I have this great video that I want to make but I am bogged down by capitalism because those are the days I have to work so I don't know what to do at this point but we're gonna try it um I'm going away for like a week. I guess it's just gonna be an update video because I was gonna make something good, but like we don't, it's not in, it's not, it's not within my capacity at the moment. Um, I'm going on a trip. I'm gonna go away for like a week, um, like starting this Saturday um, because it's my mother's birthday and life is just a lot right now. So I'm gonna leave. <laughs> I'm just gonna detach for like a week. And hopefully when I come back, I'll have some normal semblance of like a human person inside of this meat suit. That'd be great. Um, I have not been doing anything at all because we are still in a pandemic. I've just been working. I've been promoted to full time, which is great, which means now I have benefits. Like paid time off, which is crazy. Ugh, never had that before. That's wild. I think it's especially wild considering that the first like real government tax job that I had was like not even a year ago. So now I'm here with a full-time job with benefits, like not even a year later because I'm what? Sickening. I am what? That bitch. I am iconic. I've watched all of Dry Grace. Oh my God, finally something good I could think about. Um, I finished Dry Grace season 12. I know that it ended like like two, three weeks ago, but I just binged like the whole thing. I didn't know that it was like currently coming out. I thought it came out like a lot longer ago than it did, but like this season was really good. Is that just me? I feel like the past few seasons that I've watched have just been like not fun to watch, especially last season because it's just like, oh, we have some like clear winners and then there's everybody else there who's just sort of like there because they need other queens to like compete. And then everything in Untucked was just like angry and just everybody was fighting and I just hated those vibes. But this season was really good. It had great vibes. All the queens were great and talented. And just like, it was an actual joy to watch everybody compete because everybody was good and brought their own things to the table. I thought it was great. I just, I thought it was an amazing season. I had so much fun watching it and I haven't had that much fun watching it for like the past few seasons. Cause the past few seasons have just been like, ugh. But like the season was really good. But like, I think we could all agree, at least in my mind, that Jada was a clear winner of the season. Even though I was 100% rooting for Gigi, cause Gigi is my favorite type of queen. I love like a Gigi or an Aquaria. Like uh, usually like a younger queen who's like really high fashion, but also like funny. Just, I love that type of queen. Like that's sort of like a little bit of a jack of all trades because they're so young and they're, they've are they like grown up in this era in being able to do each and everything. Like there are other queens that do that, but like a lot of other queens I feel like have like a thing. Like they're like a spooky queen or a campy queen or like a comedy queen. But I feel like these younger ones are truly bringing everything to the table. And I think that's so fun. But like, it was so obvious that Gigi couldn't win this season because Aquarius just won two seasons ago. And like last season it was Evie and she's like the weird campy queen. So it couldn't have been um, Crystal that won. So it had to have been Jada because like, that's the way that I see it is that they like, America's next drag superstar is not just like the best person in that season. It's the best person for the collection. Like if you can't just have like, all pageant queens be the next drag superstar because that's not fun or fair and you can't just have all campy queens or all um high fashion queens you need to have a collection of all of them so you can't just like have a campy queen after a campy queen and it would be too soon for another high fashion queen so it had to be a pageant queen like not saying that jada didn't deserve it jada was great but i feel like out of all the queens she's just got a little bit under shine like she didn't get as much screen time as i feel like she needed to be the winner of this season and that's 100% up to the producers who really just, she just didn't have that much 
there because I feel like they really were like editing it and setting it up for Heidi to be in the finale because she had so much screen time and she was so funny and she became like a really cool person to watch but then she got eliminated and then there had to be like oh Jada's here too and like Jada she's great very talented amazing she really came through with that with the finale uh, lip sync she was great but I just feel like she I didn't get to see enough of her throughout the season for me to like root for her to win but I'm glad that she did because she was great and I'm glad that like she's now part of the Drag Race Hall of Fame because she's talent amazing um that's all I've been doing I just I, I watch Drag Race and nothing else has brought me any joy because you know the protests have really been all that's on my mind the protests and the corona and oh panic at the disco I feel like I talked about this um I have been just like looking up pre-split panic birch and just trying to like buy it all for myself in order to like fill this hole and void in my heart because like I love Panic at the Disco, do not get me wrong. I wear a Panic at the Disco bracelet each and every fucking day because I love them. Um, I love Panic at the Disco. But I think we can all agree Panic at the Disco isn't really Panic at the Disco anymore. It's Brendan Urie and his backup instrument players. Like that's, that's what the band is. He's not a band, he's just one person. Like, I don't know how he can still go by the name Panic of the Disco when it's just him. Okay, I guess we're gonna get into this whole thing, because that's all I can feel I can talk about at the moment. Um, I strongly believe, and I know this is an opinion that I really have no right to have, but I strongly believe that when Panic splits, John and Ryan should have kept the name Panic of the Disco, and Brendan and Spencer should have done their own thing. Because if you're thinking about it in the context of the band in which it was formed, the band was truly originally created with Spencer and Ryan. So like, if anyone got the claim to the name, it should have been the original people. And as we can see, Spencer was already like not with the band. Like if you go into the Vices and Virtues era, yes, yeah, Spencer's there, but he's not like, there so it's clear that it wasn't his choice to like keep the name and it's clear that like ryan still wanted to do music and make a band and like be a musician after he left so he a hundred percent should have kept the name especially since he was like the life and soul of panic in the disco he wrote all of fever you can't sweat out so ryan deserved to keep the name it's like if you get a divorce and like brendan was the person who got the house the money and the kids and i'm just like you don't this isn't fair <laughs> Like, what did Ryan do in order to get nothing? He got nothing! And then he had to do the Young Veins album. Is that what this band's called? I don't know. I'm not, I'm not up to date with his solo music. But he did the Young Veins with John, and then that didn't really go anywhere. And now he's doing the Dead Kids tour with Zberg. And, like, I'm so glad that he's back. Because that's all I need in my life right now is Ryan Ross. But, like, he deserved to keep the moniker Panic at the Disco. It's just, it just feels right in my soul. Like, why did Brendan, why, why of all the people, the person who was not an original member, Brendan, get to keep it? I hate, by the way, that people call him an original member. He's not. He was added into the band later, just like John was. The original members were Ryan and Spencer. I guess you could consider Brent an original member, but I'm not gonna do that. Brendan was not an original member. Therefore, I don't believe he gets to like have claim and people are like, oh, the only original person left is Brendan. Brendan was never an original member, okay? The band died when Spencer left, okay? We're not, we're not allowing this, like, lies. We're not spreading these lies here. And another opinion on the matter that I have no right to have, because I don't know the situation, I'm just an outsider with my own thoughts. But, like, they say that they broke up because of creative differences, but like, I don't believe that at all. Like, sure, that might have been part of it, but like, Spencer and Ryan were childhood best friends. Like, they were friends since they were like 13 or something. Like, they were children when they became friends and made this band. And then when they split, they don't split together. Like, they go their separate ways, and it seems from interviews that I've heard that they don't talk anymore. Like, 
creative differences doesn't break up childhood best friends. There has to be something personal there. There's no way that like, if you're like, oh, I just want to make a bit more folksy music, but I want to make a bit more rock music. Okay, that's fine. We'll make our own bands. Like that cannot, that doesn't ruin a friendship based off of like years. That, that, that doesn't happen. There has to be something more there. But like, why? If there was a person, it has, a lot of people like to think it's personal between Ryan and Brendan and I'm not gonna get into that, but like, if it was, why would Spencer not take the side of his best friend? Like, what happened? And if it was between Ryan and Spencer, which I like, feel like makes more sense considering that their friendship should be a lot stronger than whatever creative differences that they had, what happened? What, 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 what was it? What happened? I cannot, I just... It upsets me every time I think about it. Every time I think about how much disrespect Ryan Ross gets in the Panic at the Disco split. Because yeah, there's like the group of us that like care and respect the, the basis, not basis, not John, but like the base, the foundation of what Ryan Ross brought to Panic at the Disco. But like there's so many people who just like don't don't know and don't care. Like so many people just like listen to high hopes and hey look by my maid and be like, wow, what a good band panic at the disco, what a fun day. But like they don't know <laughs> the shit and the heart and like everything that Ryan poured into Panic at the Disco to get nothing. <laughs> he got nothing! In the divorce he got nothing. <laughs> and I just I'm so upset that he's been given dust when he is a lyrical genius. Okay, I will, I will stake that claim right here. I strongly believe that Ryan was the backbone of Panic! in the Disco, and when he left, the band has gone downhill. I think that their best album is pretty odd. I will die by that. Uh, Fever, amazing. Vice is pretty good, but like, and Too Weird to Live, Too Weird to Die, yes, is a great album, and I appreciate it because it was the first Panic! in the Disco album that I got into, but I think we could all agree Death of a Bachelor, Pray for the Wicked, not good albums. I think we can tell that Brendan at this point is just making it for the money, which is what hurts me the most. It's what's happening to Fall Out Boy, where it's just like, it's clear that they're not making the music anymore because they like need to. They're making it because they have a record label that expects them to. And it's just so upsetting to see because I'm just like, I don't want the bad music. And I specifically hate when like, <laughs> Fans of a band say that like, oh, you can't say anything bad about their new stuff because if you really cared about them, you would support them no matter what. No, 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 fuck that. That's some toxic band of culture that I'm not here for. You should like a musician for their music. If you don't like their music, you don't have to support them. Which <laughs> is why reversing that, I, I still do support Pink at the Disco because I don't hate their new music, but I truly don't like it. <laughs> I don't hate it. I think it's good for the pop radio commercial hits that it is. But I don't want anyone to look me in the face and say, this is like good music. This has substance. Cause it doesn't. It, it truly, it doesn't. <laughs> because at the end of the day, all the substance, all the words, all the lyrics came from Ryan. He wrote all of Fever and he wrote, and he has a writing credit on everything on Pretty Odd because he was a writer and he was amazing. Like all of the lyrics were phenomenal. You can feel that that it was just those songs are like meaningful. You don't get that feeling when you listen to Pray for the Wicked because that's ugh, I don't want to say it's a shitty album, but I truly do not like it. Like it's just so pop and like pop music's fine. But like when you listen to Panic at the Disco, you're not listening to it for pop. You're listening to it for like that alternative rock um, genre. And that's just not what they've been delivering. And like, that's fine. But also, do not keep using the name Panic at the Disco if that's what you're going to make music with. Like, it doesn't make any sense. At some point, like, sure bands can like grow and evolve, but at some point you're gonna be like, I'm not making music that should be associated with the name Panic at the Disco anymore. Like, Panic at the Disco has a legacy of being like, truly alternative, alternative music. And now it's just, now it just is meaningless. And I'm just like, at some point you should just be like, I'm, this is no longer Panic at the Disco. It's just Brendan and Yuri. Just like, get rid of the name. I just, I just want Brian Ross to make more music. That's all that I want. Cause he was, his lyrical genius. Like people like to talk about Pretty Odd and about how the lyrics don't make any sense. 
But like I would argue that's like the best part about it is that like the lyrics do make sense You just have to like think about it on like a deeper than a fifth grade reading level but like even the convoluted nature of the lyrics speaks to how good the songs are because even if you don't fully understand all the lyrics and all the metaphors within it you have it evokes a feeling you feel the music in your soul and that's fucking good writing Brian Ross did that and now he's gone he disappeared for like ever but now he's back and now he's making music again and I'm just so happy that's all that I've wanted and I am truly heartbroken that I never got to see them live before the split. I didn't get into them until like 2013, so this was far past like any of them being there. I think I think I got into them before Spencer left, but Spencer was already very far removed by the time that I had gotten into Panic at the Disco. But like I truly, with no jest or insincerity in my heart i truly if a, if a demon or a genie or a magical wish grantor came into my life and said uh you have to sacrifice something but then you can get your biggest dream of all i would give up my whole left arm to go back to like 2004 and be able to see them live that's that I, I say that you say it's you think oh ha 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 that's so silly but I mean that with with my whole chest <laughs> I truly mean that if someone were to take my left arm and I would not have my left arm for the rest of my life I would gladly take that in order to be able to see pre-split panic live have you seen videos of their nothing rhymes with circus tour that was a show that was a fucking show I would give anything to be able to see that live it just oh my god can you imagine being there and hearing people scream the lyrics to Kamisato? that would be such a fucking moment and it would 100 percent be worth losing my left arm over 100 percent 100 fucking percent i would also like to see their um honda civic tour live because i also want to see pretty odd live because they do not play it anymore they only play nine in the afternoon which is like fine or whatever but like i want to see the whole album live because that album is a gift oh my god it is amazing um so yeah if i could just be taken back in time to 2004 and just like live the rest of my life up until whenever i die that'd be great i just would like to go back to time like I would even take 2000. I would just like, just like take me back 20 years, just reset me, set me back exactly as I am, back to 2000, and I'll be fine. I'll have one less arm, but it will be worth it. I am also terribly upset by the fact that we can never hear Cricket and Clover because some stupid record label won't let John release it. I, again, would give my left arm to hear Cricket and Clover. Maybe not my left arm, maybe not that much, maybe like my hand, but like, I want to hear Cricket and Clover so bad. Like, I, I don't, I love the idea and the story that they were trying to write with Cricket and Clover, and just the fact that I can never hear it is truly upsetting, considering it's part of my favorite Panic! in the Disco album. I love Pretty Odd just like so much. When I was, when I was designing my room, as I'm still currently doing because my room's not fucking done, um, I'm trying to think of like, what aesthetic do I want to design it with? And I've determined that it's all just Panic! in the Disco aesthetics. I love the aesthetic from A Fever You Can't Sweat Out, so it's gonna have a little bit of that, a little bit of like the circus, gold, reds, a very like whimsical, regal-esque aesthetic, but then also Pretty Odd, because Pretty Odd is basically just cottagecore, and I love that aesthetic, so we're gonna take a bit of that too, but then I also love the steampunk aesthetic of Vices and Virtues, so then we're gonna take a bit of that. The other two, or the other three albums, I'm just, they're, they're good, I might take pieces of like the neons, and like the the blues and the pinks and stuff but like those albums mean nothing to me um and that's just sort of the the issue now that i have with panic of the disco is that i want to support because i do love brendan and too weird to live too weird to die still has a very special place in my heart as my first panic of the disco album but like i don't want to buy another album that i don't like and i think that's like the biggest tell that like i don't like his new music now is if people don't buy it so I feel like I need to just like stop buying it. That's why I didn't buy Mania, because I still haven't really heard Mania, but I just know that I don't like it from the singles that I've heard. I'm just not, I'm not here to buy into that. That's why I didn't go see them on that tour either. Like I wanted to see them, because I still have not seen Fall Out Boy live, 
and I was going to maybe see them this summer when they went on the Super Mega Tour, but I also don't really like Weezer, and I only kind of like Green Day, so I was like, maybe not, because the tickets were really expensive because it's an arena tour. Also, their first arena tour, which doesn't make any sense because they've been banned for like 15 years. You would think at some point they would have played an arena tour, but whatever. So I'm thinking maybe when Panic comes out with their new album, I just won't. I just won't, because I just don't, I don't like his new music. Because the, the saddest thing about this is that I truly believe that he can't put out a good album, which sounds bad, but like, I don't think good as in like, musically, it would be great, because he could play a bunch of really good instruments and he has a great voice, but also like, lyrically, I don't think he has it in him to write good songs. Because I heard an interview from like 2007 or whatever where he wrote, where he said that it's tr that Ryan is a poet and that he couldn't write good music like Ryan could. And he was right. And he just, I, I just don't think that's his strong suit. I don't think writing is his thing. He can play instruments and he can perform, but he's not a writer. So I think even if he had like plenty of years to write another album, it wouldn't be the same as like what I want it to be coming off of like, uh, fever or pretty odd because he's just he's not the same writer and he's just not a writer I don't think that's his thing which is just like the saddest thing because I like I want like well written music but I just don't think that we're gonna get that from Panic in the Disco which is very sad especially because like I I saw Panic in concert when was this does it say on my bracelet I saw that I saw him at the Pray for the Wicked tour probably like two years ago because that's when the album came out and it just like wasn't a fun time because he has such a large catalog of music and a bunch of people want to hear a bunch of songs from it that like there's no time in the middle to like talk to the audience and like feel out the crowd like you can with like smaller bands or like they did with their earlier tours that I just feel like it's so detached. It's just hearing him sing live and I'm like, I can just buy a live album. It doesn't feel any different than that. There's no like experience that comes with the concert, which is why I'm also just like, do I want to see him live next time he tours? I don't think that I do. Cause I really didn't have that much fun at the last concert. Um, but we'll see, I guess. It's just the issue that I'm seeing with music now, and I know this is the most pretentious opinion ever, but I feel it in my heart, is that people now are making music because they want to, not because they need to. I feel like a lot of music that came out in the early 2000s that I listened to, like especially the pop punk emo sort of music, came from a place of like deep teenage angst and sadness where they were like, this is a song, this is a story that I need to tell. That like, music was like their lifeblood, and there's a lot of that sort of idea or like um that sort of phrase that goes around a lot where it's like it's music in my blood where people feel like they need to be like saying these stories and i don't feel that for music nowadays i feel like a lot of people are making music because they see that being a musician can be very lucrative and that's so disappointing i don't feel like i'm hearing music from like a place of deep emotion where they're like i need to say this story i need to make this music otherwise it will kill me like I just feel like people are making music because it's fun and I think that they like to do and that's great. I love people doing artistic passions, but also like it's not, it doesn't evoke a feeling. That's what I want when I listen to music because I need to feel. And I'm not seeing that. That's the same thing that, I'm, uh, that I feel with Fall Out Boy. Like I feel like Ryan and Pete are very similar in that they had a lot of teenage angst that they put into their early albums and you can see that and you can feel that in the music. But now it's just sort of like, I guess we're making it for the money because like, for Fall Out Boy and their Mania tour, they started their tour without a released album because they had to push back the release date because they weren't done with the album. That doesn't happen if you're making music that you want to make. That's clear that like a record label was like, you need to have the album out by this date and they just couldn't do it. In order to have the album out at all, they had to have rushed it, which means that it's probably not as good as it could have been, which means that like, why would I want an album that could have been better, that they probably know could have been better, but they just don't have the time to like make good music. It's just disappointing. <laughs> and it's just like a clear thing that you could see that if like, especially in Fall Out Boy's case, if you give someone the time to really dig deep and make music that like has significant meaning to them, it's gonna be good. Cause like, as much as people wanna shout out Foley Adu, I fucking love Foley Adu. Foley Adu was my favorite album for like, for like the majority that I, uh, the majority of the time that I liked Fall Out Boy. Because I got into them around the same time I got into Panic, around 2013. 
And then I heard their uh, Save Rock and Roll album. Still fucking love that album. That album's so good. But then I got into Folia Do. Folia Do, well, no. It went Save Rock and Roll was my favorite because that was my first album. Then Infinity on High was my favorite for a little bit. And then it was Folia Do because I feel like Folia Do was so weird and different. Very underappreciated, just like pretty odd. And then I got into Take This to Your Grave. And Take This to Your Grave is just a masterpiece of an album because you can just feel the teenage angst in it. You can feel how angry it is. And I love that about that album. And of course I love Under the Cork Tree. Under the Cork Tree was my favorite for a little bit back then as well. But um, as you can see from their first two albums, that they had a story that they needed to tell, especially in Take This to Your Grave, that like those albums are revered as being like masterpieces because they're just so good. Especially um, From Under the Cork Tree. People fucking love From Under the Cork Tree. Everyone still knows Sugar We're Going Down because it's a classic. But then they got to Fully Ado and despite what I think people are like, it's just not as good of an album. And then they took like a six year break and then they came back with a fucking killer album. Save Rock and Roll is amazing. Every song on there is good because they had the time to write and put out a good album. But then they went to American Beauty, American Psycho and I like songs on it, but it's clear that it's not the same. <laughs> It doesn't have the same like soul and like feeling that Save Rock and Roll does. It's clear that some of those songs are just a lot more pop, which is like fine, but also just like, I don't think what Fall Out Boy is about or what they want to be making. I can't say for sure, obviously. Like again, these are opinions I shouldn't have because I don't know shit, but like personally, that's what I believe. You don't make a rock band to then put out commercial pop music. You know, that's the whole thing of rock is to be a counterculture against the commercialization of music and how pop music is just so overproduced, you know? But that's what they're putting out now because that's what they have to put out for the money. <laughs> because at the end of the day, it's a business and they need money. And that's what I don't like about all this new, all this new emo music. It's all just like devoid of substance. And I just want it to like say something and I want it to be meaningful and I want it to like, f like, like come from a clear place of emotion and meaningfulness to the person performing it. But I feel like that's just like not the case with Fall Out Boy and it's not the case with Panic in the Disco and it's very disappointing. Cause I want to support both of those bands but when they put out music that I don't really like, <laughs> I don't know how I should. <laughs> Cause I don't want to just buy an album that I don't like cause that's silly. But I don't, we'll see what happens with their next album. I'm very worried that both of their next albums are just gonna be bad. Um, Cause Mania, like, it's just not that good. Last of the Real Ones is not that good. Um, Stay Frosty is okay. And I think those are like the only two songs I heard. I'm just like not feeling the vibe of that album. All this to say, I've been getting into pre-split panic and I've been trying to buy a bunch of their merch from like, all of the resale websites ever because I feel like it will fill a hole in my heart. Because I feel like a big part of me wishes that I could have lived in that time. Um, I do have this very, it, it, it makes me sound like I'm crazy and I am, but like not for this reason, I don't think. But I truly believe that I was meant to live in the early 2000s. And I don't know how I've come to this delusion uh, but I truly, like, truly believe it in my heart. Like, it feels wrong to be living in this current era, and I feel like I should have been, it should be like 2003, and I should be, like, going to high school with people with low-rise jeans and uh, crazy spiked hair, but, like, I'm not. And it's very upsetting to me that I'm not living in the early 2000s. Um, I think it might come from, like, my my narcissism and my main character complex that like people were conscious and like living lives before I was. And that's upsetting that it's not, you know, about me and that things happened that I wasn't a part of. Like that doesn't fit in with my main character complex. Like everything resolve, revolves around me and that's upsetting that it doesn't. Um, but also I just wish that it was the early 2000s. I wish it was 2004. Every fucking day I wish it was 2004. Um, like I know that like life has always been bad and like I, I don't agree with those people who are like I wish it was the 50s because those people are weird and those people are white and those people truly are just like 
romanticizing a time in which there was like racism that was like truly worse than now. Um, but I feel like in terms of like the early 2000s to like now, not much has changed. There was the legalization of same-sex marriage, but that was about it. <laughs> like, I feel like life was not any worse in like 2004 than it was now. So I would be more than happy to just like live back then and just not right now when it's bad. Um, but I can't do that. Wish I could, but I could not. Um, but anyways, that's all that I've been doing. I've been wishing that I lived not now because now is bad. Uh, I've been trying to buy a bunch of Panic the Disco merchandise and I watched Drag Race and I've been focused on the protests. It's been fun. I was gonna make it a, an important educational video but I feel like I need to talk about this. I need to talk about something light and fun because the world is so awful right now. And that's the end of this video. Um, this video was filmed last week, in case you couldn't tell that I was referring to a trip that I'm currently on. I, made, I filmed multiple videos in this whole filming session and I decided to make this one, the one that goes out next week because I wanted to make that important video last week. You get it. Um, but if you have opinions on Panic! at the Disco or Old Fall Out Boy, let me know. Let's, let's, let's chat. Let's kiki. Know that I mean no disrespect to the current people in these bands or former members or anything because I do. I love them. I would not wear them on my body every day. These are basically tattoos. I would not wear them off my body every day if I didn't actually love them. This Fall Out Boy bracelet, I realized I've been wearing it for six years. Every single day for six years. I would not be doing that if I didn't love Fall Out Boy. And I wouldn't be wearing the Panic of the Disco one if I didn't love Panic of the Disco. So despite all the things that I said, still love them. Don't want anyone to come at me for like hating on their faves because I, I do love them. I just wish that like we could go back to the early days when things were better, you know? So I guess I'll just have to be here in 2020 with both of my stupid arms. Mm -hmm.